Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 9th of September. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 15 O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right, and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue, and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbours, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honour those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lord, lead us to our heavenly home by single steps of self-restraint and deeds of righteousness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again, and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the third time Jesus speaks about his death, forewarning his disciples of what faces them when they get to Jerusalem. The first time was when Peter realised that Jesus is the promised Messiah and says so openly. He reacts to Jesus' warning of suffering to come by promising to defend him to the death. He fantasises about courage he doesn't have. The second time is after the transfiguration on Mount Tabor when they set off for Jerusalem. The episode of Jesus conversing with Moses and Elijah could be Peter's imagination at work again. Or maybe he's dreaming, asleep, as Luke suggests in his Gospel version of this story. Peter's curious then about the return of Elijah the prophet mentioned by some scripture commentators and questions Jesus about it. This prompts Jesus to speak again about his passion. There's no reaction from Peter or the others this time. But today we heard the third warning from Jesus about his passion as they approach Jerusalem. He is out in front, leading the way. The disciples are astonished. It's not typical of his behaviour. Normally he walked and talked with them, rather than going ahead, alone, silent, his followers are afraid. Then he stops and tells them what he thinks will happen soon. Again his disciples are silent. How on earth are they to make sense of this change in him, let alone the things he said? But they keep trusting and following Jesus into a situation where they'll all end up disillusioned reacting in ways they'll be ashamed of, frightened for their lives, while Jesus goes on alone to give his life for them and for us all. 
How many times have we been warned repeatedly about something that puts us at risk and we simply don't get it? It happens individually and collectively. Overwork, overconsumption or overconfidence can take us to the brink where our lives, our fortunes, our health spiral out of control. Global warming, pollution, deforestation are taking the planet past the point where the loss and damage are irreversible. We don't get it though until the threat hits us personally. The disciples neither understood nor heeded the warnings of Jesus any more than they understood his promise of resurrection from death. Our global future is uncertain. We are being warned of unknown suffering ahead for all humanity. Working together urgently with our priorities and values reset, we may be able to lessen the impact of inevitable catastrophe. The promise of resurrection doesn't mean we can avoid or escape what's coming. It speaks of the ultimate triumph of self-sacrificial love in making sense of our existence and uniting us with each other in eternal communion with God no matter what happens. As Jesus once said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Let us bring our petitions to God our Father, that this day may be holy, good and joyful. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may offer you our worship and work. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may strive for the well-being of all creation, we pray to you, O Lord, that in all the pleasures and pains of life we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord, that the sick, bereaved, lonely and depressed may find comfort in your love. Remember especially Brenda, Fides, Elizabeth, Anita, John, Jill, Lucy, Lorna and Geoffrey, the Holder family, May ye be Audrey, Catherine and Peter, Gareth, Arlete, Margaret, Sandra, Pam. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and our entire lives to Christ our God. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, we pray that we will never forget that all we have, we have received from you. Grant us a Christ-led and Christ-filled approach to how we use our money and our gifts. Amen. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to God's mercy and protection. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.